Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you, Liberty Worship Team. Give them a hand clap, please, as they come down off the platform. And uh, open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 18. And uh, I'm going to talk to you this morning about the power of words. Say the power of words. Now, I'm convinced, I'm convinced of this, that very few Christians, very few Christians, understand the connection between what they say and what they get. Amen? Um, once somebody gets a revelation of the power of their words, it will change their conversations. It will change what they say. It will change how they speak. It will change what they say about themselves, first of all. It will change what they say about others because they have some understanding of the power that's in their words. Amen. Say this. Say, my words have power. Say, my words carry authority. My words carry authority. Say, my words carry faith. My words carry faith. Or my words carry fear. Or my words carry fear. Oh, praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. It's so vital. Family, do we get a hold of this? Amen? Because there's a lot of fear out there in the world. What's going to happen this Wednesday, people are saying? I don't know. I'm not God. I said, I'm not God. <laughs> Amen. I know this much. It's going to be all right. Amen. I said, it's going to be all right. All is well, the Bible says, in the household of faith. Amen. And we're part of the household of faith. Amen. All right. Proverbs chapter 18. Are you there? You ought to be there by now. If not, just look up here at my handsome face <laughs> and just follow me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 says that death and life, say death and life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now notice. That death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, in the Hebrew, it says this. Death and life are in the hands of the tongue. All right? Death and life are not in the hands of the devil. I'm going to say something else. Are you ready for this? You aren't religious now, are you? Death and life are not even in God's hands. The Bible says death and life are in the hands of the tongue. You've heard somebody say, well, you know, God's in control. Well, in a general sense, yes, because he's God and he's sovereign. How many you know that? In a specific sense, he's not. What about all the evil in the world? What about the rioting and the violence is God behind all that no no the Bible says that the thief I mean oh, Satan's a thief the thief cometh to steal to kill and to destroy so if there's any stealing going on any killing huh any destroying it's coming from the devil we can say it like this it's coming See, let me say it like this. God has given authority to men through Jesus, has he not? Therefore, the violence, the rioting, things of this nature that you see going on are coming from men who are listening to the devil. Hello? Hello? Amen. So God's not in control of that. Are you following me? 
Now, somebody said, well, he allows it. Well, he has to allow it. If you decided to go rob a bank, which I wouldn't advise that, or go rob a gas station, which I wouldn't advise that, God will stand back and let you do it. He will not override your will. Now, the other thing he can to stop you. He may send somebody across your path to try to stop you. Are you following me? But at the end of the day, he'll let you do what you want to do. He's given us our own free will. Our will is sovereign, and God will, will not override our will. Amen. So, say this again. Say, death and life, death and life. are in the hands of the tongue. <laughs> say, the power of my words. Say, my words carry power. My words carry authority. My words carry faith. Or my words carry fear. My words carry love. Or my, or my words carry hate. Amen. Amen. It's so vital that as Christians, we understand the power of what we're saying. I'm going to say this again. I'm convinced that very few Christians listen to them talk. Go on Facebook. They don't believe this stuff. Even Christians, they don't believe this stuff. I believe this. How many you believe this stuff? I believe this stuff. Amen. Now, it's not true for all Christians, but I'm saying I'm convinced that many Christians, few Christians, understand the connection between what they say and what they get. Jesus said we're going to be judged by every idle word, every non-working, non-productive word that men shall speak. For by your words you shall be condemned, he said. And by your words you shall be justified. He didn't say, I'm going to condemn you. He said, your words can condemn, can condemn you. You want to know why? What, you want to know why the, the words... God damn are so blasphemous because God's not the damner. He doesn't go around damning stuff. We shouldn't be doing that either. Don't, don't, don't blame stuff on God. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to learn some things this morning about the power of our words. Our words are so powerful. Amen. I said our words are so powerful. Amen. Now, we're involved in this church in a 21-day fast. And we're believing for breakthroughs in people's lives. Breakthroughs in this ministry. Breakthroughs in this nation. But fasting in and of itself does not change anything. Do you know that? Fasting does not change God. Fasting changes us. Amen? If anybody needs to be straightened out, how I many know it's not God? Amen. If anybody needs to, need to be straightened out, it's me, not God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Praise the Lord. So we have to get a revelation of the power of our words. My, 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 my. Go to the book of Daniel, please. Daniel chapter 10. And um, Daniel here started a 21-day fast. It was not a full-fledged fast. It was just a partial fast, which that's what a Daniel's fast is. It's a partial fast where you don't eat any pizza. You don't eat any hamburgers or any steak. You don't drink coffee. That's a Daniel's fast. You just eat mainly fruits and vegetables, maybe some soup, maybe a salad, uh, uh, something like that. Just enough to keep, your, keep you going. Are you following me? But it's not a total fast or a full-fledged fast. So Daniel was on a fast for 21 days. And um, the Bible says in uh, if, Daniel chapter 10 and uh, verse 12 says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, O Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine, hand to, thine heart to understand, 
and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. What was heard? His words. So the angel didn't come because he was fasting. It came because of what he was saying. And I am come for thy what? For thy words. That's why it's really important when you're on a fast that you really watch what you're saying. Why? Because you've been fasting and your word's going to carry more power and more authority. Because when you've been fasting, you're more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You're more sensitive to spiritual things when you're on a fast. So be very careful what you, what you say and uh, make sure you walk in love. Put a smile on your face. Praise the Lord. Verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 21 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief priests came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Verse 14, now I am come to make the underst to understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. So the angel came to Daniel's aid in response to what he was saying. Did you know that as a child of God, an angel was assigned to you the moment you got born again? Everybody's got at least one angel assigned to them. Now, you may have more than one angel, depending on what your assignment is that God has given you. Well, make sure that your words are putting your angel to work. Somebody said, will you turn that, that AC off, please? Turn that thing off. Turn that AC off before I get pneumonia. The angel's thinking, I wonder why he wants pneumonia. What, what does he want pneumonia for? I can't give him that. Right? Are you following me? But see, words. Not only that, but I can't even deliver him from pneumonia if he keeps talking that way. See, make sure that our words align with our covenants of promise so that our angel, whom God has assigned to us, is put to work to bring to pass what he said in here. Can you say amen to that? <clears throat> say death and life are in the hands of my tongue. My words carry authority. My words carry faith or my words carry fear. My words carry love or my words carry hate? My words carry encouragement? Or my words carry discouragement? Now, what is the difference between encouragement and discouragement? Well, encouragement is simply when you're hearing words that are causing courage to go into you. Is that not a good thing? When you hear somebody say something that causes courage to go into you. Well, discouragement is when you hear words that cause courage to leave. So make sure you're speaking encouraging words over yourself, over your family, and over your future. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Make sure you're speaking words that cause courage to go into you and others. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Praise God. All right. Now... Go with me, please, to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30. Deuteronomy, chapter 30. Praise God. And uh, verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I've set before you life and death. Say life and death. Blessing and cursing. Say blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Choose what? Life. See, choose life that both you and your seed may live. So, the words that I choose will bring life or death, blessing or cursing, depending upon what I'm saying. Now, if I choose 
to speak words of life, the word says, it not only will affect me, it's going to affect my entire household. And not only that, as your pastor, the words that I speak will affect this ministry. That's how powerful your words are. The words you speak, parents, will affect you and your entire household. It'll affect your offspring. So make sure, parents, you're speaking words of life. You're speaking words. Don't, let me, don't even say something derogatory over your children, even in jest. Let me, the devil's a legalist. He does not go by what you mean. He goes by what you say. Don't say something ignoramus over your children in the name of just having some fun. Don't do that. Well, pastor, I don't go to having fun then. Well, can't you have good, clean fun and still talk right? Can't you, can't you live a wholesome life and still have fun? You can, can't you? Certainly you can. Certainly you can. Amen. So, Say this again. Say, death and life are in the hands of my tongue. Say, death and life are not in the devil's hands. Death and life are in the hands of my tongue. And my words carry authority. So you getting this this morning? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Now go to uh, Mark's Gospel, the 11th chapter. Mark's Gospel, the 11th chapter. Praise God. Now, Jesus here, he said in verse 22, have faith in God. That's what we're talking about. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Verse 23, for verily I say unto you that whosoever, let me ask you a question. Are you a whosoever? You are, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, we all are. Everybody in here is a whosoever. That means this will work for anybody in this room. Anybody. Jesus said, verily or truly, I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, this mountain of lack, this mountain of debt, this mountain of sickness, this mountain of pain, be thou removed. From my body. Be thou removed from my life. Be thou removed from my finances. Huh? Can we do that? Yeah. And be thou cast into the sea. Now listen. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Believe what? Believe that those things which he saith. Say this. Say death and life are in the hands of the tongue. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall what? Shall come to pass. They shall come to pass. <coughs> he shall have whatsoever he saith. Do you see that? Now then. Somebody said, well, I have faith in God. But this situation is going to turn out. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. But now, once you say that, don't go around talking about how, well, no, I'm not sure if it's going to work out now. It, it, it doesn't look like it's going to work out. Wait a minute. You just got in saying you have faith in God that's going to work out. And do you know that you can't have faith in God without having faith in your words? Jesus said so. Jesus said, have faith in God, right? Then he told us how we release our faith in God. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he, which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now Jesus said, I'm going to have whatever I say. If I don't doubt my heart. Isn't that what he said? So that means for me to have faith in God, I can have faith in what I say. So it goes back to having faith in my words. It goes back to 
This thing is going to turn out the way I say it's going to turn out. Even though God says all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called uh, according to his purpose. Well, if I believe that, I got to believe this here then too. I can't believe one and then not the other. Amen? I can't believe that all things are going to work out for my good and then start talking negative. Start talking doubt and unbelief. Start talking lack when I'm believing for abundance. Start talking sickness when I'm believing for healing and health. I can't do that. But Jesus said, to have faith in God, I have to have faith in what I say. Jesus said, I'm going to have what I say if I don't doubt in my heart. So I've got to, I have to believe that. Why? Because Jesus said so. That's how I put my faith in God, is to put my faith in what I say. Now what I say needs to line up with, with what he's already said. But it's going to come to pass because of what I said about it, not because of what God said about it. I can cancel what God said about it by saying something contrary to what God said about it. Everybody say, there's power in my words. Say, my words carry power. My words carry authority. My words carry faith or my words carry fear. My words carry love or my words carry hate. So let's make sure that we're speaking words that align with God's words. Did you know that this is how you got saved? A lot of folk understand this, but then once they get saved, they stop applying this principle. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Let's start reading in verse 6. It says, but the righteousness, say the righteousness, yes. but the righteousness which is of faith. See, righteousness is received by faith, but the righteousness which is of faith or by faith speaketh on this wise. Notice, righteousness speaketh. You see that? When I have a revelation of righteousness, then it's going to cause me to speak a certain way. I'm going to talk a certain way when that revelation comes. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Say the word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth. Say it's in my mouth. See your miracles in your mouth. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do you see it in the scriptures? This is how you got saved. How did you get saved? You believed in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And with your mouth you confess Jesus as your Lord. Now, did God save you? Well, certainly. But your mouth is what put this thing into motion. Your mouth did it. How do you know that God, I've already said this, I said this earlier, I'll say it again. God does not override the human will. Neither can we. God does not go around saving people because he wants to. See, in the mind and eyes of God, all mankind is already saved. But they have to receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior to activate it. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. And so God does not just come up to someone and say, I'm going to save you whether you like it or whether you don't. I don't know. He's got to be invited in. 
That's the, let me. This is the way that we receive all of God's benefits and blessings by believing your heart and by saying with your mouth. You believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead for your healing. And with your mouth, you confess, I am healed. Do you see that? With your heart, you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead for your deliverance and for your prosperity. And with your mouth, you confess, my needs are already met. What does that do? Your words activate it. Your words are what activate your angel who had been assigned to you to minister for you as an heir of salvation. What do you do when you go to the restaurant and the server comes to your table and they say, well, what can I do for you? What do you do? You, you place your order. You put your order in, right? The same thing is true spiritually. Your angel is waiting for you to put your order in. They want to know what they can do for you. So don't talk lack if you're believing for abundance. Don't talk sickness if you're believing for health. How many know that you can't go around saying, I'll never be saved? Guess what? They, they, they never will. They change their confession. For me to get saved, I had to agree with the Bible. I got down on my knees in our little apartment there in Altamont, Illinois, in the bathroom. And I bleed in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And with my mouth, I confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. That's the moment I got saved. That's back in August of 1980. And my life has been forever changed since that moment. Amen? I mean, my desires changed. My thoughts changed. Everything changed. And I had to get my mind renewed with the Word of God. But my life from that day, from that moment forward, took on a different course. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Say this. Say, death and life are in the hands of the tongue. Amen. Say, my words carry authority. My words, my words carry power. My words, my words carry faith. My words. Or my words carry fear. My words carry love. My words. Or my words carry hate. My words. Amen. Have you ever walked into a room, even though you don't know what happened, you walk in there and you can sense the atmosphere doesn't feel, feel quite right? And you can, sense, you can sense strife in the air. You know, you don't know what happened the moment before you arrived. But you can just sense there's a little bit of tension there. Have you ever been there? Into a room like that? Guess what? You don't have to yield to it. You can choose to bring calm to that tense situation by just speaking the right words. You can calm a tense situation by speaking words of love and by speaking words of life. Amen? Strife is yielded to with our tongue. Amen? That's how you yield to strife is by what you say with your mouth. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right, now go to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah, chapter 4. Zechariah, chapter 4. It's right after Haggai. And right before the book of Malachi. So if you find Malachi, just back up one book and you're in Zechariah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, let's, uh, let's look at chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4 and uh, verse 6. It says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. How would you like to be named Zerubbabel? Hey, Zerubbabel, come over here, please. <laughs> Saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Say, by my spirit. But by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 7. Who art thou, O great mountain? Who art thou, O great debt? What did Jesus say to do? Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Amen? So speak to that mountain of debt. Speak to that mountain of lack. Speak to it. Who art thou, O great mountain of debt? Who art thou, O great mountain of lack? 
Who art thou, O great mountain of sickness, O great mountain of pain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. Do you see that? You got to speak to it, though. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. And I ask you a question. What did grace do? Well, the word says, by grace are you saved through faith. Right? Didn't grace also buy back our authority? Hmm? That Adam had given to the devil? And so now, therefore, we have the authority, don't we? I said, we have the authority. And so, therefore, we can speak to our mountain because of the grace that, that pushes our authority and say, you mountain of debt, you mountain of lack, you mountain of sickness, be thou removed and be thou cast into, into the sea. And if you don't doubt, but believe, if those words which you say it shall come to pass, guess what? You'll have whatever you say. Amen. This is how, praise God, you can be delivered from debt this year. Can you say amen to that? Amen. If you'll believe for it. I say if you'll believe for it. As a matter of fact, the anointing that came upon Jesus when he was in the synagogue and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. One of the aspects of that anointing is debt cancellation, praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go there. Let's go there. Luke chapter, and you'll see it for yourself. Luke chapter, but you got to talk to it. Luke chapter 4. Jesus here just completed his 40-day uh, fast. And uh, verse 16, Luke chapter 4, says Jesus came, back, came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue. That was the local church of his day. On the Sabbath day. And stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty, liberty them that are bruised. Now listen, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That is the year of supernatural debt cancellation. That's this year. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So, but here's the thing. You got to talk right. You got to speak to your debt. Speak to the lack. Speak grace to it. God's given you the authority to speak to it through his grace. Now talk to it. Amen. Most Christians say what they have instead of having what they say. You didn't get that. Most Christians are saying what they have instead of having what they say. Don't say what you have. Say what the word says. Say what you want. Say what you want to see happen. That's in line with the word of God. Amen? I said amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Now, in closing, go to the book of Zechariah. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, say what? Yeah, go, go back to the book of Zechariah. Go back to the book of Zechariah, right after Haggai. This time, the 10th chapter. It says, verse 1, it says, Ask ye of the Lord in the time of the latter rain, so shall the Lord make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Now, everybody knows that before a farmer can harvest a crop, he needs some rain to make those crops, to make the, make the crops grow. Isn't that right? Well, when you sow your seeds, your seeds of faith, 
your seeds of love, your seeds of finances, then as God begins to pour out the rain through our words and through the Holy Spirit, as we begin to pray and ask God for it, then what happens? Then our harvest comes up. Amen. And we reap a bountiful harvest of righteousness. Can you say amen to that? But notice it says, ask ye of the Lord. So you have to ask. It doesn't happen just because God wants it to happen. You have to, ask. you have to ask. In other words, you put this in motion with your mouth. Amen. Now, go to, last scripture. Go to the book of Numbers, chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6. And uh, verse 22 says, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Say, saying. Say. See, he said something. He said something. He didn't just say, Well, God, if you're going to do it, it's got to be you, not me. Well, God's going to do it. But guess what? He's going to use you. A lot of times, we're waiting for God to do something when he wants us to move the mountain by our faith. Can you say amen to that? The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. See, these were instructions that Moses gave to Aaron to his sons. And then Aaron and his sons um, gave these instructions to the children of Israel. On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. So it starts from God. He gave, the, he gave these instructions to Moses. Moses gives, gives these instructions to Aaron, to his sons. And then they bless the children of Israel. How? With their words. Say, with their words. Words. their words are powerful. Parents, you should do this over your children. You have the authority. This should come from, from someone in authority. Parents, you have the authority in your household to bless your children. Don't speak curses over your children. Not, not even flippantly. Don't do that. There are times when I'm tempted to say something negative about our little poo. His, her name is Chewy. That's her little Shih Tzu. And uh, she can be a stinker sometimes. But I don't call her stubborn because, because you're going to have what you say. I call her blessed. Somebody says, she's spoiled. No, she's blessed. Let me, parents, never call a child spoiled. Don't ever do that. Why? You're cursing your child if you do that. Watch your words. The words come out of your mouth. Say this. Say, death and life are in the hands of my tongue. Say, I choose to speak words of life, to speak words of love, to speak words of faith over me, over my family, and over my future. Amen? We're, 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 gonna, we're, we're, we're about to do this in a minute. We're going to put this into in motion with our words. Here's what God told. This is the word for word blessing that God gave to Moses. Moses gave these, these, this word for word blessing to Aaron and to his sons. And then Aaron spoke these words and his sons over the children of Israel. And guess what? God has not changed his mind to bless you and me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. That's favor. And be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the Lord shall put his name upon you and he will bless you. Now, I'm the pastor of this church. I'm in authority here. So guess what? I have the authority to speak this word for blessing over my congregation. And parents, you can speak this word for blessing over your children. Preacher, I spoke over our son Landon. And it's coming to pass in his life. It's going to come to pass in your life too. Are you ready to receive it? Let's stand up and receive the blessing in our closing moments here. Hallelujah. Are you ready?
Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break the curse from off of every family represented here this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break every generational curse in Jesus' name. I rebuke curses that have been spoken over them or curses that have come out of their own mouths. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I decree the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord shall, shall lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the Lord shall put his name upon you and he will bless you. Be blessed, families, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. Expect something supernatural to happen to you this week. Amen?